one of the things I've always wanted to do was the PCT. And when I moved to Oregon about eight years ago, I came from the Midwest. And one of the things that was super interesting to me was these really super long through hikes. And one of the things with these through hikes that I really enjoyed was the fact that I could, or one of the things about the Pacific Crest Trail that really drew me to it was the fact that you could go days and days on end, anybody, you could do your own thing, whatever. I got a ton of books on it and I would go and I would watch these vlogs on it. I would watch a lot of, oh, I forget his name. Can't remember his name now, but, oh, Saved by Mountains. I can't remember his name, but I would watch all of his vlogs. I mean, I would watch PCT day one to day, whatever the heck it was. And it was, I was just like enthralled by this journey. So I even had a thing where I wrote up my two week notice to my employer and I was about to dip out and I was about to go on the PCT two years ago. So what happened though, is I had a shift in my, in my mindset and I'm not, I'm not saying this to convince anybody that you need to think the way that I think I'm just saying it to that. This has just been my story with it. And this is kind of like where I'm going with through hiking and the outdoors in general for me, for myself. And so maybe you can see yourself in this as well, but I did the John Muir trail in 2020 and had an absolute blast on it. And that was about 14 days it took me from, I went the unconventional way to, uh, and then ended in Yosemite. And I had a great time. In fact, by the time I was done with it, I was already trying to out through what I was going to do. And so I was still like in the through hike mentality. I ended up doing the Colorado trail the next year, which is about 500 miles. And about midway through that trail is about day 14 and 15. And I'm laying in my tent and I'm just, and I'm solo, which could have a, which could have a, a, something to do with it. And I'll answer everybody's questions at the end. Otherwise, if I start answering questions right now, I'm going to get two sidetracked and I can't do two things at once. So <laughs> I will answer them again, but yes, I would do the JMT again. Anyway, laying in my tent, tent on the Colorado Trail. I was about day 14, day 15. And I'm laying there and I'm thinking, man, I just, I'm kind of over this. <laughs> I kind of had my fill. I had my cup filled. You ever think about, especially when you get into the spring and, and you've gone through winter and maybe you were doing some ski touring or whatever, but you really need to fill your cup up with some backpacking. I, that, that's the cup I'm, I'm basically referring to. And on the Colorado trail about on day 14, day 15, I had already, I had filled up my cup. Like my cup was full. I could not bring any more into my cup. Let's say that, but I was only halfway done. So the rest of that trail, I just grinded out, just making sure that I was going to finish. And really the only thing on my mind at that point was like, I'm just not going to not finish this. In about day 19, day 20, I was meeting up or, or I was passing through hikers or different, not through hikers, day hikers on the trail as they were passing me. And they were just completely enthralled by the scenery around them. And I was there being there on there for only 19, 20 days. And I was looking at everything and I was super digitized everything. So, and that's kind of another point where it struck me where I was like, wow, this I, if, if this was a day where I was just up here on a weekend or something, I would be totally enthralled by that now. And right now, my own, the only thing on my mind is making sure I get to that finish line. And so that was pretty concerning to me as well. So those two things that I learned about myself on the Colorado Trail, I took home with me. So basically to review it, it was the fact that at about day 14, day 15, I was about completely filled up with backpacking. I was good with it. I could have went home. I didn't, but that I definitely could have. And then by the end of it, I was all, I was so desensitized to the views that yeah, it was just it was just a little bit concerning, right? 
And so compared that to the JMT 2020 trail in 2021, I, I came back from the time your trail like, totally inspired and wanting to do all these different through hikes and planning for the PCT and all that. So what was the difference? What happened from the Colorado Trail or from the John Muir Trail rather to the Colorado Trail for me? I had a lot of time to think on the Colorado Trail and I've had a lot of time to think in 2022 because I didn't do really any big through hikes in 2022, which is something that from 2020 to 20 to the start of 2022, I was banging out every basically 500 mile and below through hike that you could think of. Actually, not really, but quite a bit of them. So what really changed? Well, there's a couple things. And again, I'm not trying to change anybody's mind about through hiking or through hiking long distance trails or anything like that. But these are just things that are on my mind that I think of or that I thought of when I was on the trail and I've thought about a lot this year. So let's review kind of the skills that you need for through hiking. So here's the things that I think you need to be a through hiker. You need to be really, really good at keeping yourself alive. What I mean by that is there's a lot of components to that. So there is number one, you got to know how to, you got to have a really good layering system. You need to know how to manage moisture. Okay. Number two, you need to know how to feed yourself on the trail. You need to know what kind of nutrition you need, what kind of stuff will sustain you, how to plan your foods and all that type of stuff. You need to be good at camping, which is essentially knowing how to pitch your tent, knowing where to pitch your tent, places to places to also uh, pitch a tent so you're not going to get killed by some kind of dead or uh, widow maker. You need to know these things. You need to get over the fear of you need to get over the fear of actually going solo. Well, most of my through hikes, most of my backpacks ever really has been has been basically um, trying to get over that or, or or being solo. So that's part of it. Now, after that, and maybe you can throw in the comments here, and I see on YouTube, thanks everybody for, it looks like audio is back on for the most part. What other skills is there for through hiking, do you believe? So for me, I, I'm not sure if I can think of any more. You need, again, you need to have the mentality. You, need to, it, you have to push your comfort zone, so that's really good. Now, that's all great, and I think from... I think from the John Muir Trail and then the Colorado Trail, I got a lot of that. I mean, that was a lot of hours on trail. I did other th little smaller through hikes throughout the, throughout the time through that. And I think I, I basically, I, I checked all those boxes. But here's the things that I, I don't really like about through hiking. Yeah, problem solving skills. That's actually really true. Yep adaptability and problem solving skills. And I think that's one of the reasons why, so the, one of the comments was adaptability and problem solving so, skills. And that's so totally true because one of the other things that I'm attracted to another, another activity is ultra running. And it's the same thing. You need to be able to problem solve and have the adaptability to figure out problems as on the fly, essentially. On the Colorado Trail, I got this bad rash for two weeks on my legs that was just so gnarly. I mean, I couldn't, I can't even describe how itchy it was. And I had to figure out hitches into the towns and back. And I did that all in one day, got to urgent care, got the meds, got everything, got back to trail. All this with my phone wasn't working, by the way, because for whatever reason, my service was blown up in that, in that area. And I'm texting on my inReach. It was terrible. Couldn't find my insurance card. It was, it was a whole thing. So yes, yeah, absolutely. And so, but here's the things that I, I guess I don't really enjoy about, about through hiking for myself. So for me, you, you have, I try to do this. I try to eat as healthy as possible on trail, but it's pretty much impossible if you want, 
unless you want to carry a lot of weight and you want to have a lot of expensive resupplies, which to me, being a through hiker and you, a lot of times you kind of embrace the hiker trashness of things. So for me, I started to embrace that a little bit more on the Colorado Trail. Like I said, I would, I would try to eat as healthy as I could. I'd pack my own oatmeal in the morning, often that kind of stuff. I would bring some greens powder. I would try to make it as healthy as possible. But overall, the entire two, three weeks I was on trail and did the CT, I was eating pretty much like shit. I mean, I just was. I mean, I'm eating spam, tortillas. I'm mean, eating ramen, all this stuff. I was cold soaking the whole way. And by the time I actually got back, I was doing a lot of other through hikes and stuff that year too. And I got my blood drawn actually. And my my cholesterol was actually super elevated. So my bad cholesterol was elevated. My good cholesterol was down. And my overall cholesterol was higher than it was from a couple years prior when I got my blood drawn. Now I should get my blood drawn every year, but I forgot, whatever. So that was a little bit concerning. And I just knew kind of as a whole too, like as I'm through hiking, I don't feel like the best as I would in real life because I eat generally pretty healthy in real life. And so that's a little bit of a bummer for me. Now, if I was to extrapolate, I was only on trail for three weeks on the Colorado Trail. If I was to extrapolate that to six months on the PCT, I'm not sure if I could, I am not sure if I could do that. Another thing that concerns me, and again, this is just me, is like I I used to have a really big sweet tooth. And ever since, or and so I kicked that like three, four years ago. And one of the things that concerns me is when I get on these through hikes, I'm eating Snickers, Pop-Tarts, all this really good food. And I'm concerned it's going to retrain my taste buds and my brain into liking that type of stuff again. So that could be just my hypothesis, but it is concerning to me. I think the other thing with me for through hiking though, and this is kind of a one, is the fact that for me, I feel like if you're not learning, you're not growing. With through hikes, especially your first one, you learn very rapidly. You learn what not to do, what to do, what you like, what you don't like, food that works, gear that works. You get on your second through hike and you start hiking more miles and you you kind of start refining that. And if you ever see through hike videos on YouTube and things, what do they mostly talk about? Gear. It's all about gear. It's this gear versus that gear. Which gear is better? This gear or that gear? And I'm guilty of doing this too. And I guess one of the things, one of my qualms with through hiking is everybody kind of measures their success with how light can they get their kit? Okay, cool. To me, that's not, I mean, that I guess that is a skill because you have to figure out what you need to take and what you don't need to take and survive with. But to me, what's more interesting, I guess, are other outdoor, outdoor activities that take what you learn from through hiking and you adapt it and you mold it into that activity. So let me give you an example. Alpine climbing. I've gotten into more of that this year. And you, everything that I just said for through hiking, you need for alpine climbing. So as a through hiker, I have had the, I've got the fitness from it. I know what food I want. I know how to camp. I know how to layer. I know how to get over the fear of going solo. Although you're usually not solo when you're climbing, but you get what I'm saying. You, you're used to being outdoors. You've got that mentality from hiking. So for me, as I go forward, I guess in my own life, one of the things I'm really looking forward to and really setting my goals around is trying to become more of, I guess, a complete outdoorsman. And so what that really means for me is all these different skill sets and you combine all these different skill sets. So as we saw saw before, adaptability and problem solving skills. So you, you find that out in through hiking, but you can take that to ultra running. You can take that to alpine climbing. You can take it to a bunch of other broad range of things. So there is some things that I have in mind that 
I want to focus on, I guess, more going on in the future rather than going on a six month through hike where I will be seeing new country. But overall, I feel for me, for me, that I'm going to be basically doing the same thing over and over again. Whereas when I go on an alpine climb or I am using ropes or rappelling or something, I'm learning how to do a different knot. I am learning that this makes a good anchor, whereas this one doesn't make a good anchor. I am realizing that uh, I'm realizing the difference between this rock and that rock, especially for climbing. And there's just a whole bunch of other variables that you have to learn with that type of stuff rather than with through hiking. You're basically, again, this is my opinion. You are just, you're following a trail. You have to have the mentality to complete the whole thing, which is something that if anybody that's completed a through hike, that is exceptional. I mean, six months doing the same thing, being very physical with your body, beating your body up, walking, eating like that. I mean, that is quite incredible. But for me, I, it just, it's not alluring to me as I am right now. So here's some of the things that I'm kind of looking forward to going into 2023. And I'm curious, can leave a comment, YouTube or TikTok if if you're into some of this as well. So one of the things I would like to do is alpine, more alpine climbing and peak bagging. So I did a lot of that this year. I basically ticked off all of the big Cascade Mountains because I live in Oregon right now. And so you have to learn glacier travel belay skills, rope skills, rappelling, climbing with an ice axe, self-arresting. So you have to learn all those skills, right? But again, you're you're taking some of your through-hike skills and you're putting them into this alpine climbing category, which is really cool. I also want to get into more high routes. High routes are essentially through-hiking, but you are doing a little more navigating. You're going off trail quite a bit. And so that's alluring to me because you have to, it, it throws a little wrench in there. You have to have your through hike skills, your core skills. And I guess that's what I'm kind of getting at. Through hiking forms very core skills that you need to be someone that's really adept in the outdoors. And that's why I like it. But I think that I am now moving on past that. And I want to take that basic skill set and I want to uh, put it into use with more technical skills. So there's the high routes, you need more navigation skills, you're going off trail, it's a little more riskier, you're not seeing as many people, that kind of stuff. And then I don't know how this one will go with everybody, but I am definitely, one of the things that I did when I was in the Midwest was I, I did a lot of hunting and I would love to get back into that. I helped my buddy pack out an elk the other day and we got some of the, the meat back and it's been absolutely amazing to have that meat. It's, it's, it's great. There's a comment here. Will you still do shorter through hikes like the long trail get your trickle tiara? Yes. That so that was my the next thing that I actually have on here. I would love to do still smaller through hikes. And the triple tiara is definitely on my mind. I would love to take that. I, I think that that would be amazing. Uh, one of the reasons why I love through hiking that I didn't say before was that is almost my way of traveling. So I am not, so I had an ex-girlfriend, she, we ended up going to Hawaii together. She really wanted to go to Hawaii. I kind of reluctantly went. I don't really like beaches. I don't know. Call me weird. I don't know. I just don't like chilling on beaches. And it just wasn't, it was cool to me to see new areas, but like, that's not the way I really enjoy traveling. The way I like to enjoy traveling and figuring out and seeing different landscapes and meeting new people is actually through hiking. So all the through hikes I've done, I've gotten to know an area super intimately by either hitching into that town, talking to locals, talking to people on trail, going through and walking through a certain forest range for days and days on end. So I would love to do the long trail, actually. If anybody has ever done that, you should leave a comment. I'd love to know more about it because I actually have not done any hiking on the East Coast. I'm originally from Wisconsin, but I have not been actually out to, to the East Coast. So yeah, I would love to do more, more smaller through hikes. But the overall encompassing theme that I'm talking about is I just want to become a complete outdoorsman. I want to be someone that, that I am proud of, or, or someone looks at and they're like, you know, that is someone that can handle himself in all sorts of situations in the woods. He's probably a jack of, jack of all trades, a master of none. That's kind of what I want to be known as in 
or that's how I want to be in the wilderness. I don't need to be someone that gets a triple crown. If you look at some of Darwin's videos, Darwin on the trail, he's a super popular YouTuber. You, you notice in his last one, the CDT, he actually got super burnt out of through hiking. And it was super interesting to see because I, I identified myself with what he was feeling. Now I have been done, done nowhere near, near the miles he has, but it was very interesting to see that. And that's something I don't want to get into. I, I don't want to be in, in that place per se. The other thing actually I was, I was going to talk about that I just remembered was I got into a lot of bike packing this year and bike packing was, has been super fun because you're traveling a lot faster. So you can do the Arizona trail, the, the Arizona trail, for example, you can do that in three weeks instead of what, however many months it is to through hike, you can do these trails a lot faster, at least ones that want the bike. So instead of doing the Tahoe rim trail this year, because I knew I could already do it. It was 170 miles. I already, I knew that I could do that. The only thing that would change would be like, oh, okay, how fast could I do it? But I ended up bikepacking the Tahoe Toro, which is basically the same thing around Lake Tua Tahoe. And it was super fun. It was just a totally different experience on a bike. So I actually think that it'll be more uh, bikepacking as well, uh, because I really, really love traveling on a bike. It's super fun. One of the other things I might was thinking, throwing around was, and Anton Krupichka actually inspired me to do this, was ride your bike from all these different Colorado 14ers, one to another, and do them, come back, peak bag it, come back down, ride your bike to the next one, do it, whatever. And so, and that's another thing, because I'm going to be moving. I'll be telling everybody where I'm going to be moving, but I am moving soon, and I'll be a little bit closer to Colorado. And so that's another thing, was it'd be some, some of the more 14ers would be great to do. So if anybody's done some 14ers, leave some comments below. So let's get into some q and I got a lot of, I got some questions here on TikTok. I'll just work bottom up. So yeah, so coffee cake, one, two, three, four. Done the Colorado Trail and you love it. And I would love it. Yeah, super pumped about that. I think the, the long trail would be great. That was one of the things that I wanted to do right off of the bat from the John Muir Trail. I actually ended up, because it's in Vermont, yeah. So I actually, it was weird because when I got off the John Muir Trail, I actually ended up getting a, somehow scoring some kind of quarter when I was paying with cash. I got a quarterback and it was a Vermont quarter. And I was, I was thinking, oh man, maybe this is a sign for that. So it's pretty cool. A nice short East coast through hike is the Laurel Highlands hiking trail in PA. Sweet. Underscore bunch. So I've never heard of that one. Never heard of the Laurel Highlands, but I will check it out as well. Sounds like possibly the fall might be some good times for some of these hikes. Yeah, got some, got some leaves and things. Let's see what else we got here. We had Edge of Tomorrow. You hike solo? Yeah, most of the of the hikes that I've done through hikes that I've done actually, I I'm always doing so. I've I've never not done a through hikes not solo, actually excuse me, actually, the only one I haven't done was solo was the Wind River High Route, which is a high route. So I took a buddy with me. We were supposed to have three buddies. You should listen to the podcast that I released on Monday about that one, because that's a whole story. But that's the only one I haven't done solo. But all the other ones I have done solo. And the reason why I like solo hiking is because you aren't married to anybody on the trail, per se. I know that kind of sounds weird, but you're not married to them, meaning if they get injured, if they get hurt, you don't have to get off trail too. Because one of the things that was just really in my mind was I wanted to complete these through hikes at all costs. There was nothing that was going to stop me from them. And so I did not want to, I guess, have any hindrance. The really cool thing though about solo hiking is that you can link up with other people on the trail. And while you're not like married to them because they're not your actual partner that you came here with, you have company and then also... Like I would meet people all the time for a day or two at a time, and it would be great to hang, spend the day with them, but we would just be on different itineraries. I would get, I usually get up early, earlier than people, and so I would be out of there, and I would have to wait for somebody. So that was really nice. How So coffee cake, how is the overlap between climbing and through hiking in your experience, community experience, et cetera? That's a good question. 
you know, I would say, so the experience, like I said, through hiking will definitely get you in shape. It will, you'll understand things about the wilderness and stuff. And so that really translates well to climbing. I would say for, for climbing, man, I don't know. I would say that through hiking is a little more inclusive. I would say, I, I would say that for the most part, when you're up out through hiking, you're not, <laughs> you're got, not getting into a pissing match with somebody, meaning you're not really comparing yourself to them. Sometimes in climbing, you can get into that. And I'm, I guess I'm mostly talking rock climbing and things, but for the most part, both communities are super, super nice, super welcoming. And you can learn a lot from people as, as long as you just ask them, I guess. But I think most people that are in the outdoors are really cool people, I would say. So yeah, I would say it's it's pretty comparable. I don't see too much of a difference, but I would say that through hikers are more likely to bring you into their group and you're more likely to become longer time friends with these people because you hike days on days on end with them. And there's a lot of that shared suffering there, I guess. <laughs> are you dating someone? Liz Barlow, 93. Are you dating someone? And how can I convince you to come hike an Olympic NP with me next week? <laughs> Shoot the shot. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So no, I am, I am dating a, a lovely woman, Haley. We are actually going to be moving to out of Oregon. So actually in January. So Olympic National Park though, awesome place. I would love to know where you're going though, because that is a the awesome place. We actually did the Enchanted Valley. Watch out for bears there. We we tried that one. That was awesome though. Okay. Have you ever, can you climb without equipment? And that is from Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, sure. You can, you can, but it really depends. So climbing is broken up into five categories. So you have class one, class two, class three. So class one, you're hiking on a trail. Class two, I don't really know the definition, I guess, of class two. I think sometimes you have to use hands if you're if you're climbing or something, or if you're walking. Class three is you have to, it's more scrambling. Class three, you start getting into scrambling. So you're starting to use your hands and stuff and feet to climb over things, but it's not technical. It's not typically not scary. Class four is when you start getting into scarier stuff. Class four is probably in my mind, the most dangerous. And the reason why is because most of the time I don't use equipment on class four and you can definitely class four means that it's, it's vertical enough where if you screw up, like you could die it's exposed enough and it's, it's not technical climbing. It's still easy climbing for the most part, but if you screw up, you could definitely, to me is probably one of the most, those most scary ones because most people aren't using equipment for that. And what I have found though, was I used to use trail runners all the time for class four, four stuff. And one of the things I realized was that it does not provide the correct amount of grip. So I actually ended up getting what's called approach shoes. It's basically a hybrid between the trail runner and a climbing rock shoe. And it's got a lot of grip on it. And it's super good for a lot of those slick rocks, especially in the Wasatch range. I was super wigged out about stuff there. And if I would have had those instead of trail runners, it would have been a lot better. But approach shoes are great for class four. But then class five is when you get into the stuff that you're using behind me, quick draws and things like that, where typically sometimes it's bolted. Sometimes you got to do tra traditional climbing, and that's when you're most likely going to use going to use equipment there. Okay. And let's see. By the way, thank you, Garrett, on YouTube. I appreciate you, man. Nice to see you, buddy. It's an old college friend. <laughs> What's harder, the Colorado Trail or the 100-miler? Hard to compare, I know. I'm also an ultra runner. 
Mm. Hmm. Yeah, it is diff they're very different. Because one lasts for three weeks and one lasts for 31 hours. I would say though that as a whole, so I ran a, so just to put this into context. So I did the Colorado Trail in 2021. I did a 100 mile run just about two months ago. And I would say that the 100 miler was harder. And here's why. The reason the 100 miler was harder was because there was so much training leading up to the 100 miler that I oftentimes found myself very burnt out of running. I mean, there was time, there was one time in particular, I drove back from Smith Rock in Oregon and I had been rock climbing and then the, we were going to rock climb the next day, but it started raining. I was super mad. So I had to drive three and a half hours back and I get home and it's pouring out and I have to run 16 miles. And I'm just like, I don't want to do this. I literally just broke down on the bed and was just, I knew that that was a turn back moment. And so you always get these turn back moments in your life, especially when you're trying to do some sort of significant goal of where you can turn back. You have two choices. You can, you can go one way or you can go the other. And fortunately I stayed on the path and I just cranked out the 16 miles and or 80 miles, whatever it was in the rain. And ultimately I was successful in the hundred, but I think as a whole, the hundred was harder because of the, all the training leading up to it. I would say in the event, as in the event of both things, I would say the Colorado trail was actually harder because in the 100, I was really mentally, I had visualized it so much and I had trained so much that I was on pretty much auto. I was on, I was in a flow state for a lot of the hundred miler, which was really cool to, 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 to experience the last 18 miles though, of the hundred miler were the hardest. So that I never, cause during the entire hundred miler, I never thought about it as hundred miles. I had a hundred miles left or anything like that until I got to that last 18 miles where I was kind of injured on my left leg. And that's when it started getting really tough. But the fact that on the 100, I had a pacer, I had my whole family there, my girlfriend, I had all these people that I loved at the 100 made it way better. Now, if I didn't have any of that, which that was the interesting thing about the Colorado Trail, I finished all these different through hikes and I never have these people at the end of at the end of the the through hike to congratulate me or, or hug or whatever or throughout the whole, whole duration. At the 100, I did. And it was really, really interesting. In fact, on the John Muir Trail, after after I completed the John Muir Trail, my girlfriend at the time broke up with me in the Reno airport. So <laughs> there you go. That's that was my reward for for completing that, which it was all it was all good. So that's a good question, though. But anyway. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening on this. If you want to re-listen to this, I'm going to have this on my Peanut Butter and Mountains podcast, which I might be renaming it. I'll have to do a poll for people. But you can catch it Spotify or on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whatever it is you want to listen to. It's also going to be on YouTube as well. So subscribe on my YouTube. And uh, YouTube, come into TikTok would be great, or just listen to the podcast. I got a lot of podcast episodes up there already. So if you want to go through the library, that's great. And I'm going to be trying to do a live every Friday if I can, at least once a week. I don't know if it's going to be every Friday. I don't want to hold myself to that. I can't commit. So, but thank you everyone for the questions and all that for being great. And we will catch up with you in our next live. Later.